welcome back to the channel. On this episode, we are going to be installing this Dometic three-way refrigerator in our $500 truck camper, which if you know anything about campers and refrigerators and appliances, you know that this right here costs three times what I originally paid for the camper. Anyhow, I digress. This is a Dometic three-way. It'll run off of uh, AC, DC, and propane unit. Uh, it is pretty compact. It's supposed to be, hey, baby girl, how you doing this morning? The camera is rolling, okay? This isn't your shot, okay? Anyway, this particular unit is three cubic feet, and it was uh, the smallest one that I had available that I could pick up right here locally and get ready to do the install. Take a tour of this Dometic unit for just a moment. Take a look at it. All three cubic feet of cold bliss. We have a little tiny freezer area up top, big enough for, I don't know, something. And down below is our regular refrigerator area. There's your uh, discharge for the moisture to run out. You got a little line that comes in for the thermostat control. Up top, you have a really nice digital control panel. That's pretty cool. And as far as a latching mechanism, it has this latch here to make a, a positive seal and to keep it from flying open while you're cruising down the highway. I'm not gonna lie to you, I've been reading the destructions and they're a bit intimidating. Not for the just basic hookups, slide in and screw it in. That's easy. I could do that without instructions. The real issue about this thing is all about venting. If you don't have enough fresh air in the back of the cabinet to draw in for the combustion and to release it so that the heat goes out, it isn't going to work at all or it isn't going to work very efficiently. So we've got to get this bad boy has to be cooling. It has to be has to have airflow on it that's consistent. And there's a lot of specifics about it. And of course, in my application, um, because I'm putting this into a camper that was never made for one of these, I have less than ideal opportunities to create the ventilation. So anyway, I've been reading Appendix A, Appendix B, Appendix F, I've been taking my measurements. We're going to get close to something that it wants us to do, but it, we're never going to get exactly on because of what I'm dealing with. Now, if you're building a camper from scratch or if you're using, if you're just replacing an existing unit, no problemo. This is uh, just a bit more challenging. So anyway, we're going to hop in there and take the old uh, icebox out. Nice part about Having a place in your garage to work is uh, having a place in your garage to work. Yeah, so here is the ice box. And good news about this thing, there's really not much holding it in. We have four screws and I have a drain line. That's it. So let's go ahead and get this thing out of here. So here's our raw cabinet. And first off, my height is no good. I have to be 29 and a half inches. So I'm gonna be cutting in up here. I'll let you guys into my logic here as I prepare to cut a hole in a perfectly good camper. So this is your Dometic vent. That I need to be center of this panel, you know, for this to work. Got this template made out. I have my center point marked area here that I can begin to set that up. So I'm just gonna have to drill a hole through here. That's going to index me. Here we go. All right. Okay, that's gonna be the bottom of this uh, hole and now I guess I gotta go figure out my other corners. Safety 
before sexy, right? I don't know. Maybe you find this sexy. If you do, you probably ought to get some help. You know, who knows? Maybe I should have an OnlyFans channel where I put on safety gear. Okay, so here we go. I'm absolutely hating this. Super precision about this, let me tell you. I'm going to put you guys down and finish this up. See you in just a second. How about that? I now have a gigantic hole inside of my camper. So, um... I'm going to get this all-purpose metal cutting, etc., etc., blade off. <clears throat> Going to this curved one that is uh, made for wood. Hopefully, I can kind of keep a straight edge here. How you doing? Remember me? Oh my gosh, I'm an idiot. I'm, a, I'm an idiot. But anyway, yeah, I just cut a huge hole in the side of my camper that I just patched all the holes in it. Let's don't even talk about it. Unless you just like watching. Hey bud, how you doing? All right, unless you just like watching the saw action, I'm gonna spare you all this here, cutting the second vent out. I have the bezels installed. A Little bit of background on this. Let me take you around the backside. Uh, Dometic vent bezels that I got here um, did not come with any mounting hardware. And I'm told that they really don't come with mounting hardware anymore. This is just some um, plumber's tape metal. It's a little too weak, but it gave me a pattern to start with. And then this is why I don't throw a lot of stuff away. Uh, this is the molding. You'll find these moldings here around some of my interior trim. It's the molding that was up here around the um, countertop. So saved it. I don't know why. Well, now I do know why. This aluminum makes a nice, neat little bracket to hold these in. It's got the exterior wall aluminum tight against the foam and you know it's all sunk up here together uh, so the next thing is really for me to get this bottom box closed in there's going to be a lot to talk about here in terms of the baffling that has to be done to keep the air flowing in the correct direction but let me get a floor in this thing i need to see if i've got some half inch plywood 7 16 half inch whatever that i can cut and put in uh, might have to do it in Two pieces. No, I don't know. He's got a big enough hole. I can probably kind of, you know, get that to go in. So, all right, some plywood, but that's good. Working right now on the floor for where the fridge is going to sit. This is actually marine grade treated uh, pressure treat, whatever plywood here. And it just so perfectly worked out. This is this is uh, material that I had from building the chicken coop. Looking at this, I'm going to need plenty of room to work out the diesel heater. I'm thinking about extending the size of this cabinet, changing that door out, and coming up with a bigger cabinet down here. What do you think? I mean, why not, right? So, um, lots of things to move and change. You know, coulda, woulda, shoulda. Um, if I had been putting this fridge unit in here from day one, I would have done things clearly differently. This would already be done. I went and consulted the destructions. And, uh, you know, it's always good to read these. I did. I Believe it or not, I've been reading these. And my issue is that with my RM2354, Things are just a little different between my cabinet space and requirements. 
We're going to come really close to some of these things, but not going to be all the way there. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to get into cutting my, my cabinet. And um, my measurement before I read the destructions had me cutting it here. But according to these uh, construction manuals, I got to cut it here at 29 and 3 quarter. All right. Uh huh. So that is our. Boy, I hate doing that. So the diesel heater control is ordered from uh, Mr. Jones in Australia, and I'm gonna wait to put the heater back in until I get those parts, make sure all that's together. But one big thing I'm gonna do down here, relocate this power outlet a little differently, and go ahead and open this door up bigger because there's space here that I can take advantage of. Um, and, you know, try to uh, increase the size of this cabinet as well as access down in here to service the heater. All right, you're looking at my super rough carpentry work and decisions, decisions, decisions. So um, this is everything just loosely placed. I'm getting ready to take it out and make this permanent. Um, I am going to insulate, so we'll just kind of show you that before we put it up, but I'm going to insulate behind these walls and this wall, these walls. Reason being is that that literally is permanent open to the elements now, and the only thermal barrier, you know, you have, if you had any, was, you know, this wall when it was solid. And so now the cold or heat or whatever can creep in through otherwise hollow walls. So this, this is going to be all insulated and I, you know, may or may not make a difference. Andy, who going to go ahead and uh, do this? Um, I'm really freaking out about exactly how I'm going to run the wires and gas line. Uh, but if I don't have a cabinet, I don't, you know, none of that matters. So this is job 17 and then job 53 is hooking up the lines, I think. So, all right. Get this all put in. Box is liquid nailed and glued and screwed and, well, no screws yet, but air nailed, stapled, and uh, very solid. Feeling good about that. Looking good, all the insulation's in. We are going to dry fit this thing the first time and just see what happens. Okay, I'm gonna put you, go around to the door side. You got it? Let's see if it'll go this way. Oh my gosh. Talk about a tight fit. Can you switch your hands around? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think we're gonna have to come in here right where the, let's go ahead and put it down. Okay, let's go to the hole. Okay, let's go up, up, up. Hey, what's holding up over there? Which corner? Oh, that corner. Ooh, we don't have a quarter of an inch anywhere in here. Hey, that part looks good. Okay, so I think The baffling may be, might be a little easier than I was thinking. Um, I don't know. So we've got to close the cabinet off up here. So we don't want the hot air going that way. We want everything, we want everything radiating off in this direction. Um, so I can start taking some measurements, maybe figure out some sheet metal enclosures or something. Um, everything is super tight though. Good Lord. There's no, no room to play in here. Uh, this is our, I gotta close that off tighter. I don't think that's gonna be a big deal. Um, 
Hmm. Okay. Okay, we've officially moved into the making the baffling part of this project. So let me let me share a couple things. Got my helpers in here. Uh, one of the really cool things, one of the really cool things I like is this um, this digital measuring device. Super super helpful whenever you're doing projects like this because I can use it to distract him uh, while I actually get out the tape measure and I measure and I work on my uh, <laughs> as I work on my projects. Okay, actually, um, you know it's funny. She's not fooled by it. She's completely not fooled by it. This one has yet to. I think he knows what it is, but anyway, this is pretty cool and uh, lets me get up in there and make some measurements. But either way, uh, what I want to share with you is uh, this is my this is my redneck uh, metal brake uh, bench here, uh, using my tailgate and a four foot level, some clamps, my uh, good old rubber beater in place hammer and whatnot to create some metal. This is leftover sheet metal from the outside of the camper, aluminum pieces. This is my first component uh, that I built. And the idea is that it's going to come in here and uh, let's move this one out of the way. So, hmm, okay, so this piece This piece is going to mount, I'll get it all cleaned up. That's just dirt on it right there. This piece is gonna mount something like this. This piece here is going to mount something like so, okay? And basically what it's going to do is close the gap. Let's go over here, I'll show you. I'll show you, I'll show you. So this piece is going to close the gap on the back of the unit. It's gonna sit something like this inside the cabinet with the sole purpose of creating a chamber where the air is being forced to come in through the coils. The fan's gonna drag it up to this guy. Well, the next issue I have in my compromise build, I don't have the upper head space here to create other little things to air this out. By the way, this cardboard does not get removed. <laughs> don't remove that. Anyway, so my next piece here is this upper this upper piece. And its intended destination is to look something like so, okay? And it looks something like that. And this guy's job, let's see if we can get an imagination on it. If this works out right, this piece is gonna sit in here, inside the box, essentially like so, right? Something like that. And this piece is going to be sitting down like so, and that is going to cause the air to be directed up through and out the vent, right? Because this guy is going to be sitting out here, you know, somewhere, somewhere like this. Uh, so we're, we're going to be pushing that air out. <sighs> so um, now, what, what's up with this? I need to waterproof this. Um, it's inevitable this is going to get wet in here, apparently, according to the destructions and the experts. So we're gonna to need to treat, seal, and do some things. Um, and I'm working on that, working on that next. Hey bud, appreciate your help. Just to share with you, um, tailgate of a pickup truck, my four foot level, a little uh, one by two. And this is the flange here that I'm, I'm, I'm in building in order to uh, protect from water intrusion through those vents. The uh, big freaking hammer, it's, it's actually made of a rubber uh, compound. And I'm just gonna kind of assist myself and just roll this up on here. So that would be, hey baby girl. So this would be what we call that a poor man's metal brake. It worked 
And then um, this is not precision type stuff, right? So take our clamp slot here. And you know, there you go. There are uh, plenty of other ways to do this. And uh, not suggesting you do what I do, just showing you what I do. So now I'm gonna take my uh, metal cutter. This, this tool, <laughs> This tool right here is fantastic. It just nibbles around and I get a kick out of these little curly cues it makes. But anyway, now that I've bent that, I'm gonna go ahead and trim it. And then this is gonna give me my piece to get started to create the, um, what do we wanna call this? Shield, water shield, leak prevention. Yeah. All right, I'll show you when I'm all done. All right, so. Let me just tell you something that this design here by Dometic is is horrible. It is this this is this design is designed to fail. As water comes down, which it inevitably will, let me show you. Put you on the other side of the cover. So the cover basically snaps in. I can see you. You probably can't see me. Maybe you can. Anyway cover basically snaps in like so and you you are going to have water that comes down and gets on this lip it's just it's going to happen and there's nothing there's no backstop so it's not even tapered so anything that gets on here is just going to keep going in thus the reason to do something here so could have been so easily solved by casting a lip at the back side of this but anyway so this is our, our little piece that I redneck metal broke. Metal broke, metal break. I made a redneck metal break and I broke it. But anyhow, so this guy ultimately is able to go in here. I've got my holes drilled so I can put my retainers back on. But that still leaves me, I have a lip now, but it's obviously subject to leak in each corner. So, uh, you may remember such videos as my cow leak on the GMC here and some seam sealer that I picked up for that, which is automotive grade and it's designed to put on bare metal. It will withstand vibrations, temperature changes, and other such things much better than silicone or other type of sealants. So my goal here is to, you know, uh, pack in plenty in the corners and um, get this thing put in and while it's still pliable to work into the channel here into the groove and create sort of a you know a, a little you know whatever you call it uh, a swoop a swale uh, gutter curve whatever you want to call it we want to make sure that water that gets back here doesn't just sit here. It kind of works its way out. So, anyway, absolutely crazy. I, I cannot believe I'm having to spend time and resources making a brand new product better. Um, any of you out there with campers that have these style vents on the outside, especially if you have a slide out, like if you have a fridge in your slide out, you're going to have one of these at the bottom, one of these at the top, just like I've done and guess what? If your RV builder didn't didn't install some sort of a gutter channel like this, you have water as we speak on the floor of your camper. Probably rotting something because it's what they do. So uh, <coughs> yeah, you know, here goes nothing. I'm gonna and and try to do something with this and probably make a huge mess, but it's gonna be a start. Okay, so here you go. Um, got my headlight on, make it a little easier to see. This is our automotive seam sealer along the back, duplicated in both areas. This is primarily in the back side of it just to kind of keep this from moving because uh, there's going to be a lot of vibration. It's really more of a an adhesive than it is a water sealant. I'll take you around the front, show you. So here we go. It's a three-quarter inch lip in place, 
And then there is our seam sealer in the groove. And you can kind of see in here how that is. A step up here to the next one up. And it's sealed up in the, in the jams and the cracks. And otherwise, I'm happy with that. I've, if you're like me, you know, uh, whoa, whoa. If you're like me, you uh, maybe sit up at night, you know, you're, you're trying to sleep and you're thinking, it just gets on your mind and you gotta find a way to solve it. So I've been trying to solve this puzzle now for three or four days. I think it's solved. All right, let's find something else to do on this thing. I'm now going to Kills Primer this box. Uh, as I threatened I would, I am. Uh, so we're going to get that done. You know, this is amazing. This, uh, this uh, fridge, really, if, if I was just replacing an existing one, you're talking hour, hour and a half, you know? And now I'm on to a second week of this, just dragging my butt um, step by step, getting it done. But we're going to get it done. Next time you see this, it's going to be all kills primered, and that way, you know, any moisture that does blow in here isn't going to be just landing on raw wood to destroy it. Okay, it's another day, and you know how you can tell is I'm wearing different clothes, right? I, I don't know. All right, uh, primer is dry, kills primer, and uh, box is looking really, really nice. I'm going to go ahead and treat this with... Um, this deck paint. Uh, we use this around the house on a variety of things. This stuff is really, really great for moisture. Um, wood, etc. is really extremely durable. Uh, it's been durable enough for these guys. Hey buddy. Uh, when they come and go on the back porch and on my stairs up to my office area. So I'm going to go ahead and seal it up in this and give this some good thorough time to dry. All right, so this is my redneck air baffle for the back of the fridge that we did our redneck metal brake work on. Uh, this is the part that faces out, and then this faces against the coils on the back of the uh, fridge. I affixed it with some weather stripping left over from my Humvee project just to kind of seal this to the back wall so I don't have air escaping between here. And then I've got my flanges pre-drilled and I've marked it in here for where we're gonna mount it. So come on, let's go do it. And outside in just a moment. Okay. So there's our baffle. And uh, let's go see what it looks like from the outside. Well, you can see this portion of it, but you really won't see that because that the grill grate it's gonna cover that. All right, upper duck here, and uh, yeah, fridge hole. We're getting ready to test it, find out how bad I screwed this up. Okay, so here's the part that uh, nobody nobody likes. I don't. Anyway, hole poking time. Um, I'm going to use my Unibit. Uh, but I'm going to use a tree trio of unibits to kind of get to the size I want. And I went ahead, let's turn this thing on. How about that? Anyway, I went ahead and marked my spot here and slid this thing back forward. And this is where, this is it. This is it. I'm going to, I'm going to. All right, that's it. I'm going to punch the hole through there. Yeah, okay. Right, so what you're looking at here is basically my manifold assembly. After multiple trips to and from the RV store and the hardware store, what I came up with is a pair of 24 inch gas lines. They are 3 8 on one end and 3 8 with the uh, compression fit on the other end. And this allows me to provide gas to the stovetop and to the fridge. Just for the record, this thread tape, it's yellow, 
This is specific to oil gas uh, type applications. We have the valve in here. Um, I have tested this with soapy water on my connections and no, no bubbles. And up here, I'm going to turn my light off. Look at what you see right there. That's some gaseous among us. It is heating up right now. There it is. I mean, it's happening right there. There it is. Oh my goodness. So we have in here, we have in here uh, 120 volt AC and we have our DC on an 8 gauge going through a bulkhead that I'll seal up further. That comes into the DC power and my AC is plugged into its cable. Gas is hooked up. Inside we have the gas line out of the manifold going into the stovetop. I have my power uh, AC DC right here and I actually hooked up the um, 120 volt AC to the back of the load side of this outlet so there's no plug on this end it's just there so all of that is in our 8 gauge goes all the way up to the battery just want to make sure that it's absolutely right. So it's running. All right. This has been uh, sort of really putting the siding on the camper. I think this has been the longest single project that I've done since this began. Uh, but we're going to get the four screws in here, one screw in the back. All right. I'm about to wrap up everything here in the back cover and just a tour before we close this thing off we're getting towards the end game here uh, this is our door and the door needs to have a cover on it um, mine didn't come with any sort of a cover I'm sure you can order one or something but we're gonna make one uh, the first step to this is removing this upper trim piece that is right here you want to take your time with that because you could easily snap it or break it there are screws on each end and then you're going to stick a screwdriver here and gently release the tab that pries against here and then you can work its way out. So the, be the best I can see here, it's 19 and 3 quarters by 26 inches. And what I did is I went over to the uh, RV place. Believe it or not, I used up, I've used up all the metal pretty much from having resided the camper. But I went over and picked up some sample metals. This is the same metal that's on the outside of the camper right here. Um, it's two-sided color. It's uh, the gray on the outside, metallic, and then it's got this uh, dove gray on the back. And he thought that I might like that, but that, uh, that piece does not fit any of the theme of the rest of the inside of the camper. The, um, the back door, the back door in the camper that we rebuilt on the interior I chose to flip the metal backwards and use that so I'm thinking that that way we'll at least have some sort of a match I'm going to trim that to slide in so the refrigerator door and then the back door of the camper have the same um, metal so uh, I'm gonna get to doing that we're gonna put this together pop it in and fire it up here in a bit see what happens All right, guys. And that is all that holds this cover in here, a little clip at the top and a spin at the bottom. This is our water drain line 
for the, obviously, the water that comes out the excess. That's that. Let's go inside and power it up. Okay, so for today, I'm not going to run the gas on it right now. I've already tested. I know the gas works. So we're just going to see if this thing will go. Turn it on. All of our lights are coming up. And I'm going to select... Um, nope, gas isn't going to go because... There we go. So it is kicking on AC power auto. I actually have the gas valve off right now. I'm in the garage and I don't need that thing firing. You know, I'm in here. Uh, set on the coldest setting. And this is incorrect. So ignore that. It's 61 degrees inside the camper right now and 638 in the morning. And We've just initiated our test. Uh, we are sitting at 59 degrees in here. Oh, spring loaded. Okay. Should be, okay, 58 degrees in here. So it, it is 6.40 in the morning. It is 58 degrees inside. Um, we're just going to leave this on today while I'm doing other projects and um, we're going to come back and check it and see if we can call this job done. And I got a bonus for you while we're waiting on that thing to cool down and while I've been waiting on parts and other things. I went ahead and took this floorboard here that sits under the table and conceals another compartment. It was an old uh, press board piece that... Uh, had cracked and I'm pretty darn sure it was original, it was heavy. Um, replaced it with a piece of half inch pressure treat, uh, marine grade, same stuff I put under the refrigerator. And then I had leftover Pergo flooring. So set that on and put my trim in. And this piece right here was looking mighty tired. So cleaned it up, a little bit of uh, spray paint. I'm sure this is just going to scratched up and stuff over time, but um, finished it off some nice stainless bolts because this area does indeed get wet, you know, from the feet. And then if you remember from when I gave you a tour of this thing, I invented my very own mixed speed dog water bowl extravaganza check this out right remember this so this is just so cool because we're not we're not uh kicking their water bowl over it's easy to access under here move it out of our way while we're doing other things and uh boom so just scrap scrap away obviously Actually, I think this was wood left over from the camper when I tore it down and then some of the goofy one by twos and stuff that was, was left over. But anyway, so that is our new and improved, finely matching, you know, pretty doggone water resistant floorboard for our kitchen dinette. Pretty happy with that. I mean, it's like brand new. So very good. All right. Clock is still ticking on the fridge. And we will come back and check on it in a few hours and see if we've cooled down. Okay, moment of truth. And let's just wrap this whole thing up, okay? So it is uh, almost 9.30 in the morning. And I've been really busy doing other things around here. Uh, but here we go. Let's take a look. I'm going to open up the Dometic fridge. Take a look inside. And let's take a zap here. 46 degrees. Uh, that thing's running at 33, but 46 is well within the temperature range that the folks at Dometic said we should be running. Up inside the top, let's take a look. What do we have? 13 degrees. Uh, so this puppy is doing its job. It is really, really, really a beautiful unit. 
I'm super happy with the way everything ultimately went in. Take one more look outside. And here we see the new addition of the vents. Obviously, you've been looking at those with me all along. Um, so I am, I am super thrilled. You know, something else we can do uh, to give you an idea. Let's see. We are putting out 100, 113, 103, 100, 111. Uh, yeah, this is our primary. 113, 122 degrees here. Down here, we're at 66, which should be approximately, let's see, we're 63 on the outside of the camper, 66. We're picking up 69, 70. We're picking up some temperature inside here. But that means that the baffling is working and our hot air is rising and coming out the vent. So again, this is not perfect by the book, what Dometic asked us to do in terms of our ultimate space up here, but I have to work with what I've got, right? And so super happy up inside. Uh, everything's just getting crammed in here, but our uh, valve system up here is looking great. And I've tested the um, LP and I know that it works. So for now, I'm gonna go ahead and shut this thing down because we have lots of other things going on. But I think, let's go up here and figure out what to do. I think we're just gonna, yeah, I'm just gonna turn it off. So I'm gonna open the door a little bit so it doesn't get stuffy in there. And yeah, I mean, that's it, job done. So next thing, keep an eye out. I am working on the afterburner unit for the diesel heater and um, slowly going through that, but I probably won't have results on this really till I can get the camper outside and um, that way properly ventilate the diesel fumes. Uh, but yeah, super happy. All right, you may remember that this was our original door here. And thanks to all these massive changes, we now have a much, much larger door for this matches the other one. Eventually, a lot of this stuff is going to match up, but um, we did that. Everything's insulated. Diesel heater is back installed. This compartment's totally sealed off, so we only draw fresh air here and not from everywhere else. So, uh, yeah, pretty happy with it. All right, so thank you so much for coming along with me on this ride. This last 45 minutes or so of your extremely valuable time actually took place over about a month. So this has been, you know, quite a project and certainly glad it's done. I've got other things to move on to. We'll update you as we go, but let's get back to doing some off-roading and some other fun Alaska things instead of spending all of our time in the garage, okay? So catch you guys next time. Please like and subscribe. I'll continue providing you with more material as we go forward. And we're going to make this $500 truck camper something really special for 2024. Thanks for watching.